Hello, hello, everyone. My name is John Edwards. With me, as always, is Zeke Baker, and together we make the Dad's Drinking Bourbon. Wherever you are, whatever time it is, thank you very much for making us a part of your day. Say hello to the folks, Zeke. Hello, hello, hello. You did that last week. Well, I didn't think you were asking the same question, so you teed this up the wrong way. I ask you the same question every week. Ask me a different question, you get a different answer. How are you today? I am floating right along a river of rye whiskey for, I think, about the third out of four shows we've done, and I still don't have any complaints. We're having some fun here and uh, venturing off the path a little bit. I know. You think people are going to get sick of rye? Maybe they're just all right with it. All right, all right, all right. Maybe. No. Was that too much of a dad joke? I think the first row was enough of the joke. (laughs) We're very lucky. We do have a guest in the studio again. We've been having a lot of great guests lately. And that is Ryan Yamada from, and I'm going to butcher this, even though you just told me it. It's Hochstadters. That's correct. Zeke, you're you're trying too hard, John. You got to take the Southerners route here. And this is where the thing called the Georgia mumble really plays in well. Because you don't try to really worry about all the syllables in the word. Or even if it's right, just Hawks Otters. <laughs> Done. <laughs> I said it right. Hawks Otters, see? <laughs> right there. Boom. You're going to pick up some of this stuff one day. You got to put a little boom hour in your game. Yeah. <laughs> a little boom hour in your game. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> we sit out in the alley by the trash cans. You're like, we could do an episode out there, actually. Yeah, actually. we could interesting in this area (laughs) well so there is a lot of whiskey in hot toddies Um, (laughs) i'm gonna mess up the name again hock stotters i like where you're going just have me a variant you come up with hot toddies one we'll we'll keep up here yeah we'll we'll do a running count on this episode there's the slow and low rock and rye which is four years old the slow and low rock and rye that is six years old there is the Vatted straight rye whiskey. There is the lock, stock, and barrel. 13 years, 16 year, 18 years. And the Hochstadter's Family Reserve, which is 16 years old and a barrel proof. And we'll go over the, the tail of the tape of all these, but I mean, that's a lot of good whiskey, right? A lot of good juice we're drinking tonight. What's the story? A lot of people, it, a lot of it's Canadian whiskey. I think all of it's Canadian whiskey. Mm-hmm. A lot of people may not know about your brand. Give us a little bit of the story behind the brand and how you got involved in it. Sure, of course. So our uh, company, the Cooper Spears Company, was founded by Rob Cooper. He's a third generation master distiller. And his first kind of foray into the spirits world was the introduction of St. Germain which most bartenders know is like kind of the bartender's ketchup. We were talking about elderflower before, and it is the premier elderflower liqueur. Kind of alongside all that uh, recipe development that he was doing for that, Rob, as he was uh, literally digging through the catacombs of his family's distillery, found these references to uh, America's original bottle cocktail, the the Hockstetter's Rock and Rye Old Fashion, and decided to, to tweak that recipe and resurrect it. And um, just in his kind of genius foresight, the way that he was able to see the rise of mixology and create a product uh, like St. Germain to introduce to that uh, kind of second golden age of cocktails, also was able to uh, anticipate and predict the rise of rye as, you know, a uh, very quickly growing spirit category, uh, currently America's fastest growing spirit category. And so, you know, a decade ago when he was conceptualizing all this, uh, was able to kind of foretell the future and put a lot of stock into our rye. And so now we have this this beautiful portfolio of these allocated and aged rye that have uh, just age statements that you don't see on the market. Yeah, I mean, when you look at this, the f- even the lowest is going to be a four-year age statement to the highest that is going to be 16 it's not often that even with that lower stuff, I mean, you could just put down straight rye whiskey and get away with being at least two years old and be done with it. Certainly. And I think uh, Rob's vision was, you know, not afraid to sit on our juice. And uh, we'll kind of tell the story of, of Lockstock here today, but sitting on it until it is right. You know, there's there's a lot of patience involved in, in the whiskey game, as, as we all know. And uh, Rob Cooper was able to see that. And so having these these higher age statements is really one of the hallmarks of, of part of our portfolio. We're going to talk about slow and low first. 
We are going to stop here in the middle of this and do a blind tasting of some of the lock stock and the family reserve and the vatted. We're going to put those five together. Hawks out family reserve. Good job. <laughs> Notice what I did there. I didn't say it was a... Uh, you know, Hot Toddy's Family Reserve. I said uh, Hawk Stodder's Family Reserve. I will uh, keep perfecting it over the course of the next hour. But what we're going to do is a blind tasting of these. We're going to talk about the slow and low before that, but let, let's go into the different brands. Talk about the slow and low first, how that came to be. You talked about it a little bit that he found that recipe, but there's... Two of these, one's a four-year, one's a six-year. The six-year, you said, is allocated once a year. Mm -hmm. But there's these cans that we have, too. And that's an interesting part of this. It's a little 100-milliliter can of this Slow and Low 84-proof rock and rye. Is this a cocktail I'm holding? Or It, it is. So, essentially, what Slow and Low is, Slow and Low is an 84-proof straight-aged rye whiskey, 100% rye in the mash bill. After we age it, we then infuse it with dry Florida navel orange peels, raw Amish honey, Angostura bitters, and a dose of rock candy. Essentially, what we've done is create a bottled old fashioned for you. Two great ways to enjoy it. We've got it in the 750 milliliter bottles, but we also have these super innovative four ounce or 100 milliliter cans. If you're kind of looking at it right now, you see that old school pop top can on the top? We're a lifestyle brand, and, and what we do is we pay attention to markets. We pay attention to the trends. Our uh, senior vice president of marketing and innovation, Robin Green, super innovative and just really creative. And, and so our, our company is always looking for ways to stay relevant. And so these cans were conceptualized and launched in 2016. If you look at drink trends over the past few years, canned cocktails are at the forefront, and we like to think of ourselves as kind of innovators in that respect. Interesting. I know... Um Honestly, I probably saw these things like three or four or five times, you know, at the register, you know, in that checkout zone and literally focused a little more each time. Like, all right, what is this? You know, maybe they're taking too long to ring me out or something. But mm -hmm. at first I thought it was some kind of wine or, or mixer. Now I looked again, I saw the name. I'm like, hold on, slow and low. I, I think that's a whiskey of some description. Mm -hmm. See again, and you stare a little longer and I'm like, is this just whiskey in a a can like that uh, that's a uh, that's interesting like where are we going here with this right, right. <laughs> it's, it's it's for the whiskey drinker on on the go you know if you're going hunting if you're going fishing if you're going to a tailgate going to work fly, going to work there you go <laughs> like, i don't right? know where you work <laughs> I, i'm not drinking this before i go to work <laughs> just kidding folks a little 84 proof get right <laughs> i i like on the side of this it says don't need no fixing don't drink straight up or with ice. Mm -hmm. that's, that's for people from Georgia. <laughs> no, we don't speak that slow. Daniel, we're quick with it. That's I edit true. you every week. I know how slow you speak. <laughs> I may take a lot to put a thought together. But if I'm speaking, it's, it can be quick, especially if I'm excited. Yeah, Although, how about you guys go ahead and crack one open, you know? Well, let's talk about this. Yeah. I mean, Zeke's not on his way to work, so... <laughs> Well, I, I will say, though, um, straight up or with ice, you know, you can just simply put it in the cooler and then, you know, you don't have to worry about diluting it and you get the coldness. Exactly. You know, at the 84 proof, too, you know, we uh, we understand that sometimes it dilutes, but we don't want to lose the flavor in that. So, man, like uh, impressively enough, this is my first pull tab. I've heard right? about these. I live with a kid in pharmacy school that was a few years older than me. And mm -hmm. that was like a running joke on beer it was like, yeah. He was drinking beer when they had the pull tabs. I so kind of want to shotgun one of these. <laughs> Dude, I'm about to just go. I mean, what about the? These would fit in the Yeti pretty well too. Mm -hmm. You know, you throw a couple of these in there. A couple of these, John. A Yeti's huge. I know. You could have two weeks of these in a Yeti, <laughs> and and they'd stay cold for two weeks in the Yeti too. Oh, whoa! <laughs> Zeke just chugged it, like the whole thing. That's good. The whole thing. That's good. Did you get any notes on that? Yeah. Reminds me like a Grammy RNA, but lighter. Rob yeah. Cooper would call that a full pull. A full pull? A full pull. That Four ounces straight mm -hmm. to the head. Very, very similar to a Grammy RNA profile. Very similar. What's really great about this, though, is uh, the sugar content in it. Super low. That raw Amish honey. You're only getting about seven grams of carbohydrates for that drink that you did do right there. It's all natural sweetness. I was a little more civilized. <laughs> and... uh I've been sipping on it. Go big or go home, buds. I want to make sure that I continue to say the name right. 
Well, I just want to make sure if anybody listening and they were concerned, you know, is it, you know, can you do this? Is it going to burn? Is it not a good idea? No, it, it, it goes right down real quick. And I've had countless shots of Lord knows what that were not enjoyable. And that really was. No, that is better. I mean, if you're going to do a shot of something, that, that rock candy, it's got that sweetness to it. It, it almost tastes like, I mean, it is a candied old fashioned. Certainly. And, I, I like that sweetness. It's a different type of sweetness than you would get from even old fashions I would have at the bar. Definitely. Yeah. And I like the, the the aspect of the raw honey. Mm-hmm. We, we talked about that at some point in the past few weeks. We did talk about that. It, 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 and if people haven't ever had it, it, it's such a different flavor profile. And you probably wouldn't even think it was honey. But, you know, go to a farmer's market, get just some natural non commercialized store-bought honey but but get just fresh real legit stuff it'll change what you think of in the world of honey and i don't know how much more natural stuff that you get than dutch <laughs> raw pennsylvania dutch yeah raw amish honey right there in the can this is dangerous though dangerously like, delicious that's what i'm saying there you go. is this is one of those things that you know we're having it a little bit warm and zeke you crushed that completely warm I think with the sweetness of this, and if you cool it, I'm not talking about put it over ice. I'm talking about you, you put it in the fridge or something like that. That is going to go down way too easy. Yeah, see, that's where you mess up. You leave it at room temp. You know what you're doing. It's 84 proof. You get a little bit of a kick singe. It's warm, so the flavors aren't new. I think if that thing gets too cold, you're not going to get the flavor out of it. I'm saying, like, you're going to mow the lawn. You're going to your first round of golf and uh, your first hole in golf and... You need to loosen up a little bit. You know, some people crush like a Starbucks energy drink. You crush one of these, your swing gets right to the right speed. You're hitting it nice, straight, right down the fairway. I like where both y'all's heads are at, you know. I'm not here to tell you how to drink it. I'm just hoping you do drink it. By no means, they have not paid us. He is here out of the goodness of his heart sharing some some drinks with us. There's no sponsorship involved here, but I'm just saying, like, I could find a lot of good uses of this can. I mean, one of my uh, favorite early Kid Rock lyrics, let's tie one on. I got to get set to go and cut the lawn. Here's a question I have for you. In-laws are coming to town. You could hide a can of one of these and just give yourself a little pick-me-up, like, right before they come to the door. I don't even think you hide it. You just say it's one of those coffees in a can. Those are pretty prevalent now. Well, and the color. So, let's talk about the marketing, right? Of course, yeah. The color scheme of this is a brown and black. Mm -hmm. It does not look like a a whiskey. Oh, It does not look like a rye. And I know it is a packaged cocktail, Mm -hmm. but you have to look... I mean, this almost looks like a Starbucks double shot. Oh, certainly, yeah. Very uh, uh, nondescript, you know, but a lot of thought went into it. Uh, the very first marketing that we actually had for the very original uh, labels for Slow and Low, it was, it was murdered out. It was all like black on black, you know. <laughs> uh, Rob Cooper kind of in, in our team envisioning everything, like rock and roll lifestyle, you know. That that was everything that we had to do. So the black, the cream, and the gold, it, it it's certainly on brand, but... At the same time, like you said, you know, it's 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 kind of low key. You know, it's people, like it doesn't catch your eye. You know, the only, the only thing I kind of worry about looking at it is possibly this uh, female that's on the can. Mm-hmm. It could be interpreted she's smoking a clove cigarette. I don't know. You know, we call that our goddess, and uh, something that's <laughs> super uh, on brand with us is one of our hashtags, and it's hashtag high on rye. So take take that as you will. It's <laughs> much better than a clove cigarette. I know. Where'd you get clove cigarette from? It, those things look funny. And so, like, one of my favorite <laughs> one of my favorite places to eat in Athens, Georgia, is called the Blind Pig. The mm-hmm. back of their menu states in huge font, if you um, wear patchouli or smoke clove cigarettes, we reserve the right to throw your rear end out the door. Thanks. <laughs> I tried not to cuss for you there. No, it's okay. The menu does not say rear end. No, it's okay. You could say ass. It's okay. <laughs> but the, I mean, it's very specific to, like, I think she looks like she's smoking like a Swisher Sweet. Like, <laughs> sure. she's, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not a, you know, she'd roll something else in that paper before she actually put it, she put it up there. Like, she's taken the tobacco out of that. That's what I think it really looks like. Whatever you want to imply, John. Hey. I'm not crossing that line of the law. <laughs> I, I'm not saying 
<laughs> it's only something that we would talk about uh, legally if we were in some place like Colorado. So they are. She's obviously not doing that in Tennessee. She's <laughs> obviously in Colorado or in Canada doing mm-hmm. something like that. Or she's Canada. not doing that here. Going back to the, I, I'm super surprised as how sweet this is. You almost think of this and you look at it and. I know you guys are going to say, John, you're crazy, but like you look at some, these a lot of times like they're a novelty and, mm-hmm. and a lot of people will look these over because let's be honest, where they have them in the liquor store, they're <laughs> going to be at the front. It's going to be one of those things that you see while you're checking out. You're not going to see it in the line. You know, you might see the bottle mm-hmm. and you might be interested about the bottle. How much do these normally go for? Usually about between uh, 4 50 and $5. For 100 milliliters that you can take with you, I'm even thinking like you're going golfing and, mm-hmm. and maybe that's just I'm biased because I golf, but like you could throw a couple of these in the bag Oh yeah, and it doesn't, you know, just like you would throw a flask in the bag or something like that. Well, but, John, we own clubs. We just don't get to golf much. But on that note, Father's Day is coming up. So this might be the second time we've got to play golf together in two years. The last time Zeke and I played golf together was Father's Day last year. Hey, that's and, a good time. Uh, I got a feeling it'll happen again. Yeah. And it was our our better halves actually talked to each other and said we are going to let them go away for one day and play golf. What a great gift! I love it. Hey, yeah. maybe we'll uh, we'll you'll, we'll find a way to get some uh, some of these cans to you for that outing. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's one of those things though where I think the nice thing about the can is that you can kind of take it with you on the go. Mm-hmm. It's like especially the other thing I would say is this is TSA compliant. It is. I've, I've had up to six of those in my bag at a time. So if you want to take these on a plane, not saying you can open it. The airplanes have a problem with that lately of you opening your own juice and take this from somebody who normally takes two ounce bottles with him when he travels. I'm going to I'm going to test that there. I'm flying to Denver on Thursday. I'm going to I'm going to test that theory because I usually like to have my slow and low on the plane. You could just say like, here's my card. I work for them. Right. I can't. <laughs> by I'm law, good. I can't drink anything else. I told you the kicker is you just put prescription labels on everything and say it's medicinal. <laughs> <laughs> Not everybody is a pharmacist. <laughs> It's a niche. Thanks. These are about four fifty five bucks. Yep. How much is the bottle? The bottle is usually between twenty and twenty five. So not a bank breaker at all. Zeke, what do you think? Would you get one of these? I like it. I mean, admittedly, I, I'm a Graham Yarnay fan. Um, I've been to plenty of friends' weddings where grandma was featured, as we mm-hmm. called it, and it was mm-hmm. thrown back the whole night. To me, this is, I wouldn't say subdued because it would take away from the flavor you get. But it's not down maybe a notch or two. It's just a throwback, not even feel bad about it. That's Same awesome. profile burst. I don't want you to think that we're just playing it up because Ryan's sitting here with us because we've, we've obviously given our honest taste. The sweetness of that just really gets me. It's one of those ones where I would say I couldn't have, like, I couldn't have more than two. I think just being honest that. It's so sweet to me that I would need a break. I would need something a little bit, maybe something that we're going to have a blind tasting of, um, but I would need something that would break it up a little bit, maybe a barrel proof. I I need... Full disclosure, he said that once before about shotgunning 22-ounce raspberries, and then it happened. (laughs) I Yeah. Well, you know, you got to prepare. Zeke and I were on a kickball team together. I played kickball for about six years in New Orleans. That's actually how Zeke and I met, is that our better halves were on a kickball team together. Mm -hmm. And then from our friends, we then, Zeke was on, Zeke knew my wife before I even knew my wife. Once I started dating her, she said like, hey, I play for this kickball team. Do you want to come? And then that's how I met Zeke. That's awesome. How great would these cans be at the kickball field? Fun fact on this is uh, shout out to our friend Tony. Mm-hmm. But Tony used to drink raspberries at Steeplechase and then pass out. <laughs> Man, that hard. <laughs> Dead to the world. So Zeke and I, I thought doesn't it was, listen. Zeke, I don't think he listens. <laughs> but Zeke and I thought it was funny to start drinking raspberries at our kickball games. So I was, you know, a lot of times I would pitch. Mm-hmm. And I would have a red solo cup 
of raspberries up there while we, you know, Zeke and I would alternate between we would have one raspberry to, to be funny and then we would have beer mm-hmm. in there. And then actually the funny thing is our championship game, we made it to the championship of the loser's bracket. And championship of the losers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, as you tell this, I'm like, I don't remember anything about a championship. No, it was, the, it was the championship of the losers bracket. And we made it there. And then we were in one of the national public parks. And the park police came and threatened to arrest us all because we had a cooler full of beer. Now, the person that was our team captain actually went and started talking to the policeman. And I was trying to explain to her that as a son of a policeman, you know, they came, they talked on the loudspeaker, they told us to disperse, just leave, uh-huh. right? Like at this point, it's not going to do us any good yeah. to have a conversation with the nice officer who's doing his job. Certainly. And enforcing the no alcohol in national public parks mm-hmm. thing. So we were going to just leave she decided that she wanted to question his motives for asking us to leave in the middle of our championship game of the losers bracket that really meant a lot oh certainly and uh that was interesting the takeaway from this is should you ever decide to shotgun a 22 ounce raspberry <laughs> there's so much sugar in that I was dizzy for like three innings yeah <laughs> I mean my whole world was spinning I haven't had the spins like that since the high school days probably well they weren't that bad but literally it was just like oh my god there's I mean, so much sugar that just hit my body uh is this diabetic coma status like i i can't see well like i am loopy can't see yep i mean i've shotgunned a few steel reserves in my day and sure. <laughs> that's a good one. you know the uh there's no sugar there Oof. but That'll knock you on your butt. Oh, yeah. You know, you, you shotgun a couple steel reserves back to back and uh, just order a pizza and call it a night because you're going down. You're going down. You shotgun a raspberry and you see a kickball go up in the air and you see three. <laughs> you try to tackle all of them. <laughs> see, the problem I have in my life is being, and, and I have no problem saying this. I mean, I played football. I'm 6'3 and 300 pounds. Nobody was carrying me. So, whatever I did, I had to make sure that I was good enough that I could carry myself home. That's kind of like the way I lived my life. Because nobody else was going to carry me. If I got past the point of no return, Mm -hmm. it's like, find me a chair and just park me there because you're not going to get me to my bed. You know, like, I'd have to get me to my bed. Your friends didn't have wheelbarrows? (laughs) No. Is that Georgia type wheelbarrow? I mean, I did say once or twice my dad put somebody in the front end of the tractor and then carry him home in it. Really? Yeah, he said he wasn't carrying their ass and he wouldn't put them in a wheelbarrow. So he drove the tractor over, <laughs> put them in the front end, scooped, and drove them back home. Interesting. I'm not even lying about this. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I wish I had stories like that. May, may have been a girlfriend or not, quote unquote, but yeah. Put her in the tractor and drove it home. So before we digress too much, I I would get this. I think that for me, I I really, it's such a novelty sweetness. And and I don't want to keep reiterating this, but it's not the typical sweetness that you get that is a sugar rush or sugar high. It's a nice sweetness in the sense that it's natural sweetness. As he mentioned, if you go to the farmer's market and get natural honey, you know, taste that. That's going to be the type of sweetness you get on this. The rock candy, I think, is unique in the sense that it's not going to be your typical old fashioned. You know, a lot of times when you get an old fashioned, it might taste a little bit darker mm-hmm. than this does. And this is very sweet, very refreshing, especially if you like it cold, put it in the fridge. You, you might not get all of the flavors on there as if you would have it with room temperature. But I think it goes down super easy. Yeah. I think this one's a winner in our book. It's not something that we would drink every day, but it's something that is a fun break. You know, especially with us, just like I'm saying, after having two of these, I would need a break from, you know, the sweetness. If we have barrel proof every day, you need a break from the barrel proof Definitely. and just something that's a little bit fun. You're sitting on the back deck. You just made, you just grilled. I did that tonight. I sat on the back deck and grilled. You're sitting on the back deck with the family. You open a can. You have it. 
It's fun times. Mm-hmm. Don't discredit the uh, inconspicuousness of that can either. I, I think that that goes a long way. I like that it's incognito too, though. Yeah. I mean, you could almost call that Lady the Starbucks thing. Just, she turned sideways. Right? That, that's the way that the logo of Starbucks should be. <laughs> Look, that's funny. Some cross branding. I'll, I'll, I'll give Starbucks a call later this yeah. week. So you can work something out. That, I want a this white is my espresso can. I have one every morning to get me going. Thank you. I am waiting for my peppermint slow and low mocha. That's what I'm really. See, it just rolls off the tongue. It's easy. What we're going to do now is we are going to talk about some of the other stuff that's there. I I think we should mention before we go to the blind tasting. There is a slow and low rock and rye. It's six years old. It comes out. It's an allocated release. Comes out once a year. It's a hundred proof, fifty percent ABV. Love the fact that age statements are on here. You know, we are, we have tasted this. We aren't really talking about it, but the difference, the main difference, I would say in this is that the proof of that hundred proof, the the fifty percent ABV compared to the eighty four. If you're not loving the sweetness of the eighty four proof, I would say that. 100 proof it's still the same recipe it's still going to be that honey it is the you know the dutch amish honey it's the rock candy it's everything that we have just described and it's a little bit more muted with the proof and the higher alcohol content certainly yeah great we release it once a year it's usually the fall so october 1st is a good time to start looking for that it's got a really bright hunter orange label and uh just really fantastic bottle like uh like john was saying that 100 proof the, uh, the higher proof and that really cuts through that sweetness. Uh, I like to call the 100 proof the, uh, the slow sipper. You know, it's a little hard to throw that one back. You know, that, that'll sneak up on you real easy. Zeke, do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was already cutting eyes like really hard. <laughs> I mean, if I wasn't working tomorrow, I would uh, put a dent in that bottle. But Although, side note, have you ever, ever actually had rock candy? I don't know if that's prevalent up north. Yeah, okay. I've had rock candy. I mean, it's on a stick. Yeah, the little crystals. Like yeah. This. Okay. I didn't know. Looks like it looks like you went mining for some rocks. <laughs> yeah, there's no yeah. stalagmites or tights or whatever the yeah. right word is, but you know, it's not like pop rocks. Have you had pop pop rocks and bourbon? Yeah, next episode. Yeah. <laughs> See what it does. I've done it. It's fun. I love when Zeke looks at me like he's pooping. It's not pooping. It's like. <laughs> What John tells me he did for fun versus what I would say I did for fun. What do you do for fun? It's not arable. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take a break here. We are going to come back. Zeke and I in the break, we're going to do a blind tasting of the Hawk uh more of the allocated releases here. So the Lock, Sock, and Barrel, the 13, 16, 18 years. The Hockstarters Family Reserve, as well as the Vatted. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about those. We're going to guess on what we think they are. We haven't had them before tonight, so I'm assuming we're going to do a bad job. But Zeke, like you always do, go ahead and fast forward that tape. When we come back, we'll talk about this at our blind tasting. Hockstarters Family Reserve. All right, and we are back. What we did in the break is we did a blind tasting. Ryan facilitated this. Thank you very much, Ryan. What we did is we had the Hochstadter's Vatted. It is a straight rye whiskey, a blend of four years from four to 15 years. It's 100 proof, 50% ABV. We had three different types of lock, stock, and barrel. The 13 and 16 years, which are both 107 proof, 53.5% ABV. The 18 year lock, stock, and barrel, which is 109 proof, 54.5% ABV. And then last but not least, the Hockstarters Family Reserve, 123.8 proof, 61.9% ABV. And this one comes in at 16 years old. So we have a little bit of variance here, anywhere from 100 proof to 107 proof to 109 proof. And then finally, this barrel proof of 123.8 proof. And Zeke, I'm a little nervous about this because I either knocked it out of the park or I failed miserably. I think that's how we feel most days. It is how we feel. It, you know, well, maybe maybe not we, the proverbial we. Because the royal we? Well, that would be the, <laughs> the we side of you in this team. 
a lot of times I write my notes right and then I just don't say my words good. <laughs> Nothing you think too much. My dad always told me I was a problem. You're thinking too much, boy. You turn out <laughs> stupid. Just go with it. Going back to golf and my dad would always say, don't think too much. I'll tell you where the ball goes. You just look down and make sure you hit it. I heard that too and then <laughs> beat the shit out of me over one of them trees. <laughs> Same. <laughs> we, we've all been there. You keep your head down. I think yeah. the best one I ever heard was like, look here now. You don't learn to keep your head down. I'm going to buy a small chain. There's going to be two rings in the end. One in your nose, one in your nipple. You pull up the end, boy. See what happens. <laughs> <laughs> what Zeke and I are going to do is what we always do. We're going to go through this. We're going to uh, give our guesses. We are going to give maybe which one we think is best. I don't think we went through and actually ranked all of these. We're going to say which one we like the most. Then we're, Ryan is going to reveal this to us if we're right, if we're wrong. And then we'll talk about the tasting notes of these. We'll talk about things that we found from this. We'll, we'll bounce ideas off Ryan. So it'll be a little bit interactive, but we're going to start off this actually going through and giving our guesses. So, Zeke, you go first. What do you think? Well, I mean, I think regardless of you know right or wrong, where we go from here, those two other cans of uh, slow and low. But I'm saving my. We'll, what are you talking about? We'll save that for post notes. Okay. Number one, I thought was the vatted. Two, I thought was barrel proof. Three. I thought was the 13 year, four I thought was the 16, five I thought was the 18. So you had vatted barrel proof 13, 16, 18. I did. So I agreed with you that I thought number one was the vatted. I thought number two was the 16. I thought number three was the 18. I thought number four was the barrel proof 16 and I thought number five was the 13. So we couldn't be off. What one common denominator there? The first one, you guys both thought it was the vatted. So you're both wrong Ooh. on that one. Wow. But uh, overall, John, two out of the five correct. Okay. Zeke, swing and a miss, bro. Man. <laughs> swing and a miss. <laughs> So it's not that often that Zeke actually swings and misses like that. You no, know, but it's the first time we're trying all these, so we're we're we're, we're experiencing something new. I've tried so to be uh, didactic in this too. So all right, so the, the actual lineup we have, we'll get into the taste notes after this. Number one was the thirteen year. Number two was the vatted rye. Number three was the eighteen year. Number four was the family reserve. And number five was the 16-year lock, stock, and barrel. I always like to think of your the the order in which you put them in. And did you have a rhyme or reason to the order that you put these in? I did. I did. I wanted to split up the lock, stock, and barrels. And I wanted to split up the two of the Hochstatters. Uh, we're drinking overproof. All of these uh, bottles are over 100 proof. Um, so I wanted to kind of uh, vary the proof between them. But still wanted to give you a progression. I thought the 13 year was going to be a really good litmus because that is, it was our first release of the Lock, Stock and Barrel and it's a beautiful straight rye whiskey. You drink it and you're like, man, this is rye whiskey. This is a single rye, this single source rye and it's kind of the, the barometer. And then I kind of want to mix it up from there. I wanted to take to the other side of things and do the vatted rye, which is that blend of the four different ryes. You know, so you're gonna get kind of waves. I wanted to bring it back with a really beautiful expression with the lock stock 18 year, which is that 109 proof. Then kind of, uh, I like to do them back to back whenever I do tastings with, uh, with consumers or anytime I'm doing tastings like this. But I wanted to do the back to back, the 18 year and the family reserve because they're both of the higher proofs, but both are really interesting in aged spirits. And I want to finish off with a 16-year, which I think is one of the most interesting bottles that we have here tonight. First off, I'm going to say I appreciate the thought that you put into curating an experience for Zeke and I tonight. Certainly. I would like to also mention that I got two right and Zeke got <laughs> none right. Um, but let's go through number one. So number one, Zeke, is the 13. Now, you and I both thought this was the vatted. I think if there was, you know, and because what we do on our show 
if there is one to miss on, the 13 and the vatted, I think there are some similarities there that one could look at this and say, if you've never had these before, that is an understandable miss. I completely agree. And so for me on this one, the nose for a lot of these were similar. I got a lot of vanilla on the nose. It was what I would expect from Canadian whiskeys. I got vanilla. I got that that little bit of grassiness. The And it's not grass and like a, you're going outside and, and smelling grass. It's like that meadow grass. It's something that you're out in a field. And then I got some spice on there. And that that's a very similar note to what I got across the board. You get that rye spice, but it's a f- very fresh scent that you get in your nose. Um, you're, you're feeling like you're not, I always say it's the meadow smell. It's you, you feel like you're out in a field. You don't feel like it, it doesn't, it's not oaky, it's sweet, spicy, but you're out in the country. Zeke, what, what do you get on uh, the nose on that one? Number one, I thought it was just super sweet, uh, just no heat at all. Uh, cherry cola bomb. It honestly reminded me of various MGP high rye bourbon mashes. That's the first thing I thought of. And as I went back to it more than once, it, it really seemed there at some point. I think I picked up a little bit of fresh marshmallow right out of the bag, not toasted. But honestly, that that's where I was with that kind of laughably. What about your, your taste and finish? That's what really threw me the biggest curve and why I thought it was vatted was the, the palate seemed thin. And I, as I went back to it more than once, I just didn't get a ton out of it. There was something there, some heat, some hug, but nothing just, I guess, expressed itself for lack of better words. And even for finish, I put there was a linger of something, but I don't know what that something was. Do you know what the funny thing is? And, you know, a lot of times we do this tasting and then we sit back and we we play armchair quarterback with ourselves. And what I'm finding with these first two, and let's just talk about these two together because I think that's fair, Zeke. The second one, I got vanilla grass. It was sweet again. I But this one was oakier. And I got dark oak, dark chocolate, I actually wrote down chocolate molten lava cake. It was actually the darkest of what I probably tasted from the whole group, which is funny because this is the vatted, but it it tasted the most dark chocolate to me, and I I felt like it was a little bit oakier. I thought this one had more age because of that, and as I'm looking at this, here's where I think we really messed up. The vatted is actually an age range where the 13 is a 13 year. So when we look at this, the that vatted is going to actually have, it ranges from four to 15 years. It's a blend. And I think both of us were looking at it like vatted is the lowest proof. Therefore, it's going to taste the thinnest out of all the things that are there. And the truth of the matter is this one will sneak up on you. And how much is this vatted? So this range is on the shelves anywhere between 40 and 45. And yeah, I I laughed seeing it. And and simply the the first thing I thought was a yellow label for lack of more words. But I think most people figure out where I'm going with that. Mm -hmm. My, My notes on this were compared to the first one had a little bit more warmth. Um, and it seemed to have more of a, a honeycomb flavor as opposed to just that sweet cherry cola. Palette wise, initially it was a real nice mint, had a fair warmth. I got some toffee out of it underneath. And then, and then there was an oak component that came in. It'll sound quirky, but the oak wasn't bitter or sweet. And I, I don't know where to put that, but that that's where it was. It, and it was just a real balanced oak i guess for lack of better words finish wise i thought it was a super long linger of of the same oak component and again i'm pretty picky about oak and i was kind of stumped on this simply the fact that it it didn't have just that bitter char dry but it wasn't sweet oak like a pre-fire dusty or something 
you knew that's what it was, but I couldn't put a finger on it for whatever reason. And that that's why I really thought it was the barrel proof family reserve. Like, all right, there's warmth from the nose. This really has an array of flavors, but the oak itself was in such a, a good balance. It, it that That's where I was with it, really. What's the 13-year? How much does that go for compared to the... So original MSRP on that was around 120 so secondary market, I've seen it up to 200 but it's really hard to find on shelves right now because it has been out for over six years. I'm not going to lie, though. I kind of like that batted more. I, I For 40 to 45 bucks, I liked that chocolateness to it, the, the oak that was there. It almost reminded me a little bit of MGP offerings that I said this before, and Zeke looks at me funny, but it almost is a little bit like that Boone County 12-year-old. It has a little bit more oak than... I got a lot of oak and a lot of chocolate on it, and it does not taste like a regular rye to me. There is a... Saying Boone County would do that discredit. That's a completely different oak. And Boones are... They get bitter. There's no bitter there. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It's, no, I mean, I'm just trying to give something that's relatable. Well, no, that's why. I'm, that's what I'm saying. I think you, if you, you throw that out there, it gets tough on somebody because they're... It, if they've had the boon, they've had it next to a 10-year MGP or an 8-year mm-hmm. MGP, we did it. That oak is just such a char bitter. It In a side-by-side, it's like, man. You guys are hitting the thing. nail on the head, though. I loved hearing some of the tasting notes because, for me personally, you were talking about the cherry Coke in the uh, in the 13-year. You know, I think there might be some 13-year in this batter rye because I get cherry. It's one of the most prevalent flavors. The herbaceousness, the mint, that's one of the biggest notes for me. I like to do a side-by-side between this and, honestly, Rittenhouse because it's that 100 proof. Yeah. And I like to do that side-by-side comparison between the two of those individually. The vatted rye for me just has so much character. You're getting these waves of flavors. You're getting that oak. You're getting the herbaceousness. And that's what I really love about that. Bartenders love this in their mixology. They love making cocktails. Think about a Manhattan or Sazerac with this. You're getting just so much depth when you're actually mixing this. And when you're drinking it neat, all those flavors are coming through. It's a beautiful bottle. We're actually in the process of redesigning the bottle design. So it's going to have a little bit more of a luxury feel, but still going to be at that really affordable price for the product that you're going to have. That kind of throws back to what Zeke was saying is where it kind of reminds him of something else. I mean, I think that tastes better than the packaging that's there. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the next two kind of together, Zeke. I know we normally go one by one, but let's let's run through these two together, kind of because I got these two right and you got them wrong, but (laughs) also because Ryan kind of put these in a way where things go kind of two by two, and then there's that outlier at the end. This one, the number three for me, which I thought was the Lockstock 18, and that that's what it was. But the vanilla grass spice sweet nose was pretty similar to me. I got dark chocolate, light tingle, but I tasted a little age and I had a little more burn than I had with the other ones on this. So the experience of me, this is where I kind of felt, and I'm talking about it with that 16-year uh the, the family reserve. What differentiated the two for me is one had a bigger burn than the other one. And so that's that difference. Like I could taste the 109 proof compared to the 107 proof, but I really could taste the 123 proof over the 109 proof and got a little a little bit of chocolate on this one too. Slight burn on the finish, but it was dry, dark chocolate for me. So I'm getting a lot of dark notes with that lock stock progression, which is different than the Hawk Sodders. It is a different lot, essentially, between the two of those, and, and those are different whiskeys. But that lock stock, you're actually tasting that progression from 13 to 16 to 18. It's only natural that some of those notes are going to carry on. That chocolate that I got there, that you might get something else. Um, it's only natural that I'm getting that. On that 16, I think... The funniest thing is I I made a, a tasting note that I hate giving. It was the spiciest, but it also tasted the most like a rye to me. What I'm saying there is that it was spicy, but it was light and refreshing in certain parts. And you get that rye spice. It's hard. And, and I hate that tasting note when people say this is rye to me. But I definitely got that on there. The, the finish was long and lingering. And this is... The most one on the 
the 16, the family reserve, where I felt that hug. I felt that in the chest. And that, to me, immediately told me that that was the 16 family reserve. But, Zeke, you, you talk about those two. Did you happen to eat, like, Mexican with mole sauce before you came over? No, I made steak tonight. With mole sauce? No, <laughs> with a dry rub. <laughs> what was the rub? Because I haven't got chocolate yet. I'm, I'm bewildered here. Maybe I'm just a fat guy that likes chocolate. <laughs> I mean, we've all been there. I'm just looking at my notes like, man, I have not said chocolate yet. At <laughs> any rate, for, for three of the 18 year, I thought the nose was not hot at all. It did show some age. And in, in the progression compared to the first two, I thought that it seemed to just be a, a darker cherry, maybe even move into more like a red delicious apple kind of fruit, maybe even freeze-dried apples almost. It just had that component of moving out of sweet cherry range to something else with a dark red rind. That's kind of where I went to the apple. Palette-wise, it was funny because I, I caught this in a lot of them. Oak hit it first. It, and it, again, it wasn't bitter oak. It wasn't sweet oak. It was just it had to be wood in my world. But it, it hit it first. After that, it really reminded me of um, the Ocean Spray Apple Cranberry hybrid mix. Like, that's where I was. It was Apple Cran. There was some tart behind it. There was the apple component. Still just dark red rinded uh, fruits. And there was a heat that built, but it never was overwhelming. It, it was what you would expect out of a rye in the yeah, I should get some heat and warmth at some point. Finish-wise, I thought it just had a fair hug. A, again, a linger of that oak that was originally on the palate, and then it just kind of rode a, a wave of that apple cran blend right on out the door. Four, which was the family reserve, 16-year. Nose-wise on that one, uh, I got mild heat. Other than that, not much. As I came back to it, it seemed to slowly open, and that's where in my mind I put it down as being the 16 year. Obviously more time in the barrel, more time to open. Seemed logical to me. Either way, as it opened, it seemed to have some hints of cherry, some hints of oak. I just put it down, it opened up fairly. Profile wise, um, the flavor hit quick, consistent to what some of these other products were, safe for words. There was a good warmth behind it, which I guess could, uh, looking back yield to the proof it had a good viscosity as well and there was some bitter to it but not overwhelming finish which i think really surmises this in relation to a lot of the other ones was it seemed to me to be more mr pib than a cherry cola but it lingered nicely i like how ryan nods his head yes to everything you're saying and to me he kind of looks like wtf but <laughs> hmm. <laughs> maybe the one that you know, threw back the slow and low. <laughs> hey, I got these two right. You you were on the right track, though. All joking aside, when you said this was a 16-year, I mean, you you got the age right on this one. In listening to your tasting notes, you are picking up on the things that... I think it's one of the things that I fall victim to. If you really look at your notes and if we had more time, if we weren't in this kind of rush capacity... And we had a, an hour to sit there and think about our tasting notes. You would probably talk yourself into thinking this was the family reserve, given the notes that you put down. I don't think I would consider in the. I was family trying to help you out and make you look good. Well, no, the, the family reserve is, is straight, just cash strength, right out dumped. That's where the most flavor is, for better or for worse, and to me. I thought some of the flavors in this were muted. That's why I thought it was the the lower proof of the two sixteens. Do you think that was the heat? Do you think the heat from the barrel was muting those flavors for you? I, I don't. Um, two to me just seems so much more open in nose palate, every aspect. And to me, if you take something that's sixteen years, it's going to have age. Mm -hmm. You put water in it, it's going to show more age than flavor by far. I mean, that's probably true for any of them, honestly, but. To me, the more age stated it is, the more water you put, you can really just turn a corner and end up, you know, pigeonholing yourself into one flavor, if anything. And that was my rationale behind it. And all I'm going to say on this last one, I'm, I'm going to keep it short and simple, knowing that we've been talking about this stuff for a while. But I'm really mad at myself because Tarak down to Elixir Spirits gave us this 16 before. And I know that Zeke and I have got in on separate occasions. And we both came back and said, did you have that 16-year-old that lock, stock, and barrel that Tarak gave us? 
And it's so light and refreshing. It does not drink like a 16 year old that's 107 proof. Mm -hmm. And that is the craziest thing with this one for me because it is just so light and refreshing. It's crazy how sweet it is. It does not have the same tasting notes that I almost get in the uh, the 18 and the 13. I think it's a little bit different for me. So these two, I uh, just want to touch on just super interesting. And like I said, in that progression, it's really neat. But uh, when you go back and revisit, I would definitely encourage you to, to experience the mouthfeel on that 18 year. The wood is really starting to give a lot of character to that. So when I personally taste the 18, I get weight. It really sits on my tongue. That finish is so long, so dry. The tasty notes from my personal palate, I get a lot of that apple because it's that pectin, that pectin flavor from apple that kind of sits on my tongue. Actual other flavors for this one. I get dried apricot a lot through. I get a little bit of tobacco, mm -hmm. and that's the kind of the spice that I get for that. But the the 18 year is just this 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 granddaddy of like a palate adventure for me where it starts and just keeps going and keeps going the uh, i kind of put these two together because the finishes are so both so interesting the 18 year this this long finish the 16 year family reserve the barrel proof it's got a short finish that's really surprised me the hug definitely stays with me that heat but the finish is clean and for me personally, uh, my palate isn't burnt out. I get a lot of chocolate notes on this. I get darker red fruits. I get these like like uh, Bing cherries as opposed to like those brighter cherries on the, uh, the, the family reserve, which I really like. So whenever I do side-by-side -side tastings, I like to call this my yin and my yang. I like to do these kind of a, as a compare contrast between them two. So I always like to have them kind of together there. What are the price points on those two? So the uh, Family Reserve is anywhere from 170 to 200 and the uh, Lock Stock uh, 18 years anywhere from 200 to 220. I would go on that 16 year Family Reserve all day. That is one that I think from this tasting, and I don't know how you feel, Zeke, but that is the one that I'm probably going to go seek out after this. Do we give notes on the last one or no? Yeah, I gave notes. You give notes on the last you one. You did? Yeah. Really? I said it was sweeter, and I said I was upset that I didn't remember this one because Tarak shared it with us on different occasions. Yeah, I thought it was really different as well. Not hot. It seemed to be more oakish, but it was sweet, which I didn't pick up anywhere so else. So sweet. Mm -hmm. um, this, similar to the one before, it was a 16-year. It just took a while to open up. Finally, the last time I tasted it as we were recording this, I picked up... Um, almost maple syrupishness. Um, it just took a long time to show, and that's why my guess, at least especially off the nose, was this had to be the 18. It just took that much time to open up. Palette-wise, again, a flash of oak at the front, which surprised me, but I got this on so many, but it, it doesn't hang. It just goes away. It's, I don't know, it's usually the inverse to me, but for whatever reason, I, I seem to get a lot of orange rinds in this one. Okay. Finish wise, mild hug. Again, more just a dry orange rind linger. Uh, the orange, I never picked up anything else. And we tasted all of these before the slow and low throwback, real quick. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't that, you know, throwing me off, so to speak. But I didn't catch that anywhere else. It was strange. Yeah. But I think the moral of the story, and, and I'm not trying to discredit the lock stock. Line, I think my palate just aligns more with the Hochschatters a little bit better. Um, I think if I learned something from this blind tasting, I would probably go seek out both of those opposed to the Lockstock for me. The Lockstock certainly one uh, to keep your eyes on just because we do have more of that juice and we continue to release it as it continues to age. I'd love to kind of uh, just talk a little bit about the Lockstock 16 that we finished with. And uh, I like to finish with this one a lot um, because to me, it has such an interesting just bouquet. Uh, on the nose for a lot of them, I, I get a lot, I get the meadow, I get the, the lighter, grassier smells on that um, with the vanilla, those lighter spices. For some reason on the 16 year, it's a tropical bomb to me. I get caramel. It's the first one I get caramel. That maple syrup, I get that. I smell that. As I taste it, it's tropical. If I could take Bananas Foster and put it into a glass, it would taste like this lock stock barrel. And I'm like, 
what <laughs> if you look at the progression i'm like okay that's a rye i i get it it's a rye it drinks spicy it's it's tasty it's floral it's grassy i, I like those chocolate notes i get the i get the oak i get the cherry and then the 16 comes out out of nowhere it's like bam banana and I'm like <laughs> what okay this is cool and so it's it's a super interesting to me so which I like is to kinda... something you typically not to interrupt but i mean banana is something that you typically think of from like old forester yeah and that old forester 1920 the old mm-hmm. forester statesman that's where you're getting banana from most of the stuff i mean that's something where i pick it up and i go this is gonna taste like banana. <laughs> yeah so I like to finish with that uh, the lock stock at sixteen uh, lock stock and barrel sixteen year because it's just such an interesting outlier to me. So it's always always fun to throw that kind of in the mix. I feel like Hochstadters needs to give this man a raise because he knows how to curate a tasting. And if you're listening, just you know, he he puts effort in, he puts thought in, he knows the story he's going to tell. I don't know if you're already a bourbon steward, but you are made to be one because well, you, you. you have this tasting down. I will say, uh, laughably looking back through it, the, the two things that I, I X'd out, surprisingly, are the ones that aren't available, the 13 and the 16. Like To me, those are the ones like, no way, no how. And it, it just wasn't there for me. Uh, my top two, which I went back and forth on, were the vatted and the 18 year, which both were available considering I debated both of them heavily in five or six fold price difference. Mm-hmm. I could see myself stocking up in that vatted and just having a good weekend. That's awesome. And that vatted, I mean, for 40 to 45 bucks, you're going to get stuff. I mean, if you're looking at a value play, yeah. you're going to get stuff that's four to 15 years and you know, the ratio that's in there. And obviously we don't know the ratio. We're not going to put you on the spot, but you're, you're going to get stuff that is a pretty good age. What I like about that, though, is that the age that's in there, it's starting at four years. It's not like you're starting at, you know, stuff that just came off the still all the way up to 15 years. It's stuff that would be, quote, unquote, a straight whiskey that's not age stated that's going to be at least four years. You know, that is going to be there. And again, to me, at least very interesting to see the progression of 13, 16, and 18. 13 and 16 were the first two I X'd off my list. Mm -hmm. What turned out to be 18 was the one I thought was the most array of flavor and like, man, like this is, this is where I would go if I was going to say my top choice. I'll give you a sneak peek. Father's Day 2019, lock, stock and barrel 20 year. That'll be John and I's third golf outing. And I don't know if you golf, but you can come if you bring a bottle. (laughs) So we'll start with the slow and lows on on hole number one, and maybe the turn will break out there. I like it. I like like where your head's at. Yeah, maybe the 19th hole is when we (laughs) break out that. Lock stock 20. So, I mean, I think for me, I, I... I said this already, but I would gravitate more towards the Hawk Sodders, but that vatted, I'm going to get one tomorrow. I I hadn't given that a look yet. I've looked at it in liquor stores that I've gone to. It's one of those ones where I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, I need to try that. I know I'm going to get to it. And I wish I got to it sooner because I really like that. The, the chocolate notes for me on that one were pretty incredible. But that Family Reserve, that is a bottle to me. I would pass on some of the Lock Socks, and I've said that. But that Hawk Shotter's Family Reserve... That is one that I think is worth it. I mean, if it's going to be up there and it's going to be that much, I have to really like it to say, you know, that is a special occasion bottle for me that has a unique profile, that has a nice taste. Um, I know I've had other rides on this show that we know that were around the same price point that I think were worth it. And that one was very good to me. Moral of the story, Zeke, which one of these would you get? Honestly, man, that vatted. It, it, it's coming home in, in multiples. I got to uh, talk to our peoples about this. Yes. Um, I mean, again, I do find it just laughably funny that the first two I 86 at least aren't attainable, so I don't have to worry about looking for them because it would be secondary and more money. Um, but 18 that's a very unique progression and if you want a savory pour and you appreciate that 
you're you're not overspending. There's plenty of things that are out there in the world that you could spend more money on and be less satisfied with. And that that's not a lie. We've all seen it by this point in time. But definitely, if, if you're looking to give the brand a whirl, batted where to go. If you've got a what not not the can, <laughs> you cut me off. I was gonna say if you know you feel rough in the morning or you've got people in town that you know you gotta slip something in on just tell them it's the newest starbucks espresso it, it's dark it's got gold writing on top of it and it's got a picture of a female they're not gonna know any different just put your thumb over where it says 84 proof <laughs> <laughs> boom <laughs> out the door plus and this is my first pull top i gotta call my boy later yeah well ryan we can't thank you enough for coming. We hope you come back again. I know that there's stuff that is, is going on with your brand. We really appreciate you coming uh, to the studio, quote unquote, and, and spending some time with us. Guys, it was my absolute pleasure to share these uh, this juice with y'all. We're super proud of what we do at Cooper Spirits and uh, had a really fun time putting together this flight. I love doing stuff like this. And, you know, we'll throw a couple of slow-mos back to, to break up the monotony, as it were. Blinds are always the best. You, you you never know what you don't know until you don't know it. Yes, exactly. So on that note, Ryan, thank you very much for coming. Go ahead and find us on Twitter at Bourbon Dads. Find us on Facebook at Dad's Drinking Bourbon. Find us on Instagram at Dad's Drinking Bourbon. You can download our podcast on Apple, Google Play, Stitcher, Podknife, iHeartRadio, Spotify, YouTube, all these places you can find us everywhere. Go ahead and leave us a five-star review. Write a review. Tell us why you like us. If you don't like us, if you were going to leave us something other than a five-star review, send us a direct message. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to be better. Go ahead and talk to us before you go do something drastic. Zeke, where else can the folks find us? And if you don't like us because John can't say Hawkstarters, then, I mean, it just happens. Sorry. I'm going to work on his boom hour. We're getting there. I'm a big, dumb animal, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we both are. Regardless, uh, six days out of seven, at least, we're always in Nashville, Tennessee. Always love to have company and guests. Three or four is more fun than John and I looking at each other like we're both goofy and trying to figure out who duped the other in a blind. So we need neutral parties. Speaking of that, if you listen to our last episode, you realize how much Zeke loved Elmer T. Lee. And you realize that people do reach out to us when they are in town. And they do come and sit and have pours with us. And we do record it. Please reach out to us if you're going to be in Nashville, Tennessee. We love having you here. We especially love it when Zeke picks ETL as his favorite Buffalo Trace under $40. Again, duped. <laughs> fake news <laughs> you all have a good night cheers thanks for coming Ryan thanks again cheers. Ryan thank you guys very much <laughs>